that concerns around um, the education sector. Yes, uh, Ben. Ben is still with me on the segment. I hope uh, uh, we can connect now. Ben, well done. Welcome to News Up. <laughs> ben, uh, let's let's shift gears and um, discuss um, uh, another issue which borders on education. Education, yes. Uh, we did hear that the Minister for Education had said that uh, uh, there will be a review to the policies and um, they would want to peg admission age at 18 into tertiary institutions. Uh, these uh, had raised quite some concerns from uh, uh, many quarters. And uh, today, uh, let's bring in the experts and uh, get his perspective to this position of the minister. Uh, we have joining us right about now via Zoom, Emmanuel Oji, who is an educator. He joins us via Zoom. So good to have you on the show, Emmanuel. Uh, good morning, Mr. Roberts. Good morning, Nigeria. Good, mo here. good morning, Emmanuel. So good to have you join us this morning. So uh, I'll start off with um, your general perspective to the uh, the call. It is not a policy statement, I must say, yet. Uh, but then let's let's just discuss this, uh, you know, holistically, and um, get a perspective to it. Uh, do you think uh, that that decision? Uh, the review has been called called for by the minister. Is a welcomed uh, development across board. Yeah, um, thank you very much, Silver Bet, um, for always trying to be on top of uh, situations in Nigeria and, of course, especially in education. Um, with respect to the statement made by the uh, honourable minister. Um, honestly, I have a high level of respect for that man, um, leveraging on the background where he's coming from. He's not just a person who will come out and speak. He's speaking from experience. Um, he's been a practitioner over the years, and um, he knows what um, uh, it, it, the impact of what he has said. You know, some of the problems we have had in the past or challenges, people do say that um, when you don't put the round peg in a round hole, uh, we'll, will not have a better view of what the situation is. Uh, I think we'll begin to appreciate um, putting the right person in the right place. Uh, the truth is that whether we like it or not, um, it is, like you said, it's not just a policy statement. It is an idea that is worth pursuing. Um, we have been in the universities. Um, we know uh, the current um, recommendations by our law. Of course, the law says that a, a child must be six before going to primary. And um, if you have spent about six years, you will be graduating from primary. And another six years will take you out of uh, the secondary school, bring you all together to 18. And at that point, the child should be mentally matured, physiologically matured, and uh, totally matured to handle um, challenges that come with interacting with people from other backgrounds. Uh, we've seen over the years what has multiplied people's uh, uh, psychological breakdown in the campus. Um, so all of this aggregated to reason why this man, uh, the minister, the honorable minister, is coming up with this idea. I think I do appreciate that stand. Of course, for us also, we've been clamoring over the years that um, children, parents are pushing children from primary one. You want them to be, be given double promotion. Uh, and at the end of the day, school owners and school heads are complices on all of this. They, 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 they are edge and are base in this instance. So for, for me, this is the minister, and uh, if he's coming up with this idea, it is an idea we all need to support if actually we want to make uh, a meaningful uh, uh, call, uh, opportunities that are accrued to us with this dispensation. Emmanuel, let's, let's begin to dissect um, a few of the, the things you talked about. How do you judge mental maturity? Does it have to do with age or it has to do with exposures and experience? Where do you place children that are called geniuses? Where would you place them? Because we've seen other climbs where people are, I mean, I think I heard a story of a guy that already had his doctorate degree at age 18. Where do you place geniuses if we make this a blanket decision? Yes, um, the word, you rightly chosen blanket decision. It shouldn't be a blanket decision because there are exceptional. Those children you're talking about, the geniuses, could just be maybe 
uh, one out of hundred. And so they cannot be the reason for taking decision in a system that uh, uh, has to consider over a, a million children that are to have admission into university. So, but however, like you said, it is important that um, any system we tend to set in place recognizes the fact that not all children are growing at the same age and not all the children are developing at the same time. And there are people that are actually people, gifted. People. And so if we can provide, um, when taking into consideration the policies that will guide this, you take into consideration these kind of individuals and make provision for them. That is where education is said to be wholesome. Let me also add here that um, when we are talking about children who are 16 um, and uh, are mentally uh, developed, yes, there are cases uh, where children can be mentally and physically and uh, developed all around development uh, uh, by age 16. But that is not to say that we would take a, a, a decision based on the few minorities. There are exceptional, that there are exceptional cases. We can also ensure that the, 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 the law or the policy takes care of these people and there will be any gap. Also, it's important, it's important, let me say, uh, that um, while government is considering policies, they should also look at the gap, the gap this new idea will be creating. Because some children who would have been 16, and you are asking them, they cannot proceed into the university, the system should make provision for them. But a stop gap, a gap of two years that will enable them to learn another thing in a full education environment. And at the end of the day, those kind of people should not be considered to seeking for jump again. That examination would have, or that uh, pro uh, program would have prepared them and has given them a trajectory of the, they should follow in their next career. And um, I think that is how to go about. All right, thank you very much, Amal Oji. Let's uh, look at this particular issue. Now, the things have evolved. The development of the brain has also been on the rapid, both in the psychomotive and in the cognitive domains of different children, as it were. Uh, let me tell you about a 17-year-old Nigerian boy. His name is Oluwafemi Ositade, who has gotten a college, a multiple Ivy League universities in the United States, Canada, and of course, Canada. And this is a class of the 2023 of the Ambassador's College in Ottawa. He won this three point, over $3.5 million scholarship because he scored 800 by 800 in the maths, almost scored 760 out of 800 in reading and, of course, writing. He got 4.04 over 4.4 in his CGPA to have what he is, 17-year-old. Of course, we also have another girl, Faith Oyende, in the Lagos State University, which when she was 16, she was denied uh, uh, admission board. When she was 17, she got it. She graduated at the age of 21 as the best graduating student in biochemistry. Now let's look at these issues. And we'll talk about the Catch Them Young syndrome. Wouldn't this policy be inimical to the Catch Them Young syndrome, to those who are exceptional, those 16 and 17 years, who can do better than the 18, 19, or 20 year olds? Yeah, I, I did mention earlier that uh, there are a few exceptions. And um, in the US and uh, the UK, or even in Canada, where you've mentioned, there are systems that are inside this country. Um, it is not anything wrong. It's not anything, it's not their making for them to be that very talented. But a system should provide for such people. Like I've told you, it will be inimical to progress deciding the lot of a nation or the fate of a nation uh through the few who are gifted yes we are aware that there is this um the system when taking into consideration the new policy or the new uh, idea should actually make provisions for the uh, talented not only the talented there are people who are also exceptionally backward in terms of learning make provision for all of these people that's why we are asking for all inclusive education system and again let me say clearly that yes i think i know about faith um, it's very clear that some children uh, are very, very talented. And um, no way, no way, I do not agree that those people who are talented, if they are spotted out, they should be given an exceptional room. You talk about a guy, a young guy who graduated at the age of, uh, at about eight in, in the U.S. and he's doing well, 
And the reason is because there is an opportunity, there is a means of identifying them and giving them that exceptional, uh, 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 what's it called, um, fear that will give them the opportunity to excel. We can do that here. If this is done in the human realm, not in spiritual realm. So we can, it can be implemented in Nigeria here. But we are looking at the overall, what should benefit the average Nigerian child who is pursuing educational career in the universities. Do not forget also, that when we are making emphasis with university, it is because of the way our system is structured. If we are fully structured in the way it should be, of course, today the United Nations, uh, the United States are begging people to go to to beg, begging their citizens, because by the time a, 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 a U.S. majority of U.S. citizens finishes from their secondary school, they are already independent, financially, economically independent, because the primary secondary school education has given them all they need to survive in their life. So it is because we are all, every agitation here, every focus is on higher education. Everybody wants to go to university and obtain a degree certificate. That's our problem. To a reasonable extent, that idea is undoing us in so many ways. Now, let's, let's go back to the private schools. When you go to the private secondary schools, you see so much of them. Some private secondary schools do not even have SS3. They end at the class five. And of course, when you go to the private to universities, they call them glorified secondary schools, right? Because of the age either of people that are there. So how does government, if it becomes law finally, how does government try to make sure that the private universities implement this particular law? Because they are private and they have their own criteria of admissions as well. Uh, being private does not mean that they are operating in isolation. The first of all, what makes them qualify to be uh, operational in Nigerian system is because they've gone through uh, the requirement set by NUC or, to, uh, or by the federal government through the NUC. Accreditation is being done and all of that. Their programs are approved. And so it is, it is the duty of the regulatory body of the federal government to continue to keep them in check. So uh, if federal government comes up tomorrow to say this is how we go with our education system, uh, of course, uh, I, 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 uh, the private sector is part of this system. They will have to follow suit. They do not have any reason not to be part of it because we are looking at it, how the education system could be better. Like I said, uh, Sahil, uh, being a man that is experienced, coming from his background, is coming with a whole lot of ideas. Yes, let's give him the chance uh, the next four years uh, if he has the opportunity to implement what the ideas he feels that would work for the Nigerian university system. Well, let's look at educational development, just like you said. Not much has been done in educational development in Nigeria here by the government. We should be looking at the better infrastructure, better schools, qualified teachers, and we should be looking at equipment in schools, laboratories, uh, 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 libraries, and the rest of them, which the schools lack when you talk about infrastructure. We should also be looking at the development on how to make sure that exam malpractices have been nipped into the board. Now, don't you think the government has been distracted or they're distracted, Nigerians, when they talk about the age at which you go into school rather than talking about the development of education in Nigeria? Well, um, I will say clearly that it may not be a distraction, but some, to some extent, it could also be a distraction because so many people are asking, um, the, the challenges we have in education in Nigeria, is that where to start from? Yes, you can start from anywhere. Um, Nigeria in education has myriad of challenges, including funding. Um, we know how year, year in, year out, budgetary allocation to this um, sector is, uh, uh, of course, adversely not what it should be. And um, we also, of course, have also heard my opinion in Silverbed here that even education should not be treated as a sector. Because when we treat it as a sector, we, we, we feel that it should be competing with other sectors. Education is the life of every other sector itself and should not be considered as a sector. So it is when we look at it as a sector, that's why we feel that when you are allocating 2% to that, you are allocating 3% to this. So it, it, education in Nigeria is where it's having challenges. So the age is just probably one of it. You know, it's, a, it's a symptom, so to say. And if uh, the right person, as we see, we are looking at uh, Mama now to be, if the right chances or opportunities given to him to run the education sector the way it ought to be done, 
we believe before you leave Turkey, some of those challenges we're talking about could be tackled. Uh, even with um, when, when government talk about uh, private sector, education, there is an argument in some quarters whether it's a public good or it's, a, it's not. Whether it is a public good or not, then we all know that we can all agree that it's a merit good. If it's a merit good, government should, in fact, allocate a huge fund yearly to ensure that every Nigerian, irrespective of uh, status, irrespective of background, have access to better quality education. All right, um, Emmanuel Oji, uh, thank you so very much for your time. Uh, but we need to run like now. But if uh, I'll give you 60 seconds, just what has age got to do with learning? Oh, yes. Um, age has, to do, has a lot to do with learning. A lot, a whole lot. And that's why you cannot move a child who is six years to go to secondary school because you're considering the age. And, um, of course, a human being, if you followed up the developmental stages in human life, from infancy to childhood to adolescent to adult, all of these have a, 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 a impact in the life and the capacity of a child in terms of brain development also. So when you talk about age with education, they are synonymous. It is difficult to say you pick a child who is, uh, no matter how gifted he is, from uh, who is just two years or three years beginning to talk, you take him to uh, JFS2 to begin to because right. the child is talented. All right, Emmanuel. Their background, yes. even like the child we're talking about um, who is gifted, yeah. they, they have to uh, expose him to some of those levels one level after the other then it may not take as long as the other ones uh, have to take up to one year it could be six months it could be three months all right it could be all right all right uh, emmanuel, emmanuel uh Moji, thank you so very much for your time with us on the show uh we've been able to establish that uh, maybe a blanket um, a position might not be exactly what we need right now uh, when it comes to age of children in tertiary institutions thank you so very much emmanuel Oji. Uh, an educator. A pleasure speaking a pleasure with you. Here. Yeah. Have a great day.